one that paid the price in full. Amen? Amen. God bless you all again. So today we're going to talk about the power of the cross, so the power of the resurrection. We're talk about the power that lies down in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. How many believe there's power in that name? Yes? Well, let me tell you this. Come on, yes, give him praise. He can be praised every day, all day long. Let me tell you that. We should be praising him all the time, right? Now, I want you to think about this, and I want you to prepare your hearts because God is going to heal tonight. God is going to set people free tonight, and God's going to bring deliverance and breakthroughs tonight. But I want you to understand this, that tonight, I want you to always, always reflect on what is being spoken, but I want you to put your faith in what? In the power of God. Put your faith in his word. Put your faith in the Holy Spirit. Put your faith, you know what, in what he said. Not on a church, not on a person, not on a method. No, it is him. It is his word. We are his people. It belongs all to him. And that's why I believe that tonight, even as we're talking, many of you will be healed. I believe that tonight. Do you believe that? Come on. Yes. Because just by hearing that name, something tremendous happens in the spiritual realm. I don't know if you knew that. The devil runs and flees the name of Jesus. So the more you say that name, the more you're convinced that that name has power, the more you will see that breakthrough, and the more you will begin to use that name. Because sometimes we don't use it enough. We say, God, do this, and God, do this for me. But he's saying to us, hey, I already gave you authority to use my name, and so that in my name, you will do what? Cast out demons. You will heal the sick. In my name, you will raise the dead. In my name, you will lay hands on those. And they what, will begin to speak in other languages. In other words, tongues. We will see that these signs and wonders will follow those that believe the message that Jesus Christ was saying that he is the Son of God and that he came down to do what? To die for our sins. That anyone that believes in him will not perish but rather have eternal life. Do you believe in the Son of God? Do you believe in Jesus? Come on, give him praise. This is a, a night of celebration. This is not a night to be sad, a night to be, you know what, in sorrow. No, this is a night for us to recognize that he is going to do something special in us. Amen? So I want you to say this, that if you, if you feel or if you know that there is something wrong with you in the sense that maybe there's pain in your body, maybe there's sickness in your body, maybe you'll be going through oppressions, depressions, maybe you'll be going through torment, maybe you'll be having lots of nightmares, whatever the case may be, I want you to make note in your mind because as we're speaking, I'm going to ask later on to see how many of you actually got healed just by listening to the name of Jesus. How many believe God can do that? Yes? Or we don't have enough faith to believe that he can operate through his name. Come on. No, 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 no. He has the power. It belongs to him, right? So how many here tonight, let me just ask, have pain in their body right now? Yes? Come on, lift your hand. It's okay to recognize, okay? Because I'm going to ask the same question again later at the end. And if you got healed, you're going to say, God healed me today. Do you believe he can do that? Yes. How many are experiencing maybe sadness, sorrows, or maybe depression? It's okay to admit it. How many? Okay. How many believe God can set you free? Yes? Well, let me tell you, by the end of the night, you're going to feel something, that heaviness lift off of you, because there's power in the name of Jesus. Do you believe it? I keep asking the question because you have to be convinced of this. You cannot doubt that he is who he says he is. The Messiah, the Son of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the way, the life, and the truth. Right? And if for some reason you're being tormented by demons, if for some reason you feel you want there's shadows in your house, if for some reason you feel like you know what, the demons come in the middle of the night and they scare you, they oppress you, maybe you're having nightmares or whatever, Jesus can also set you free of that. Can you believe that? Yes? yes. Come on. Yes. Yeah, come on, give him praise. It's all about faith, right? Faith in the Son of God. Faith in the Holy Spirit. Faith in what He's done for us. And He wants to do something. So I want to start off by reading this scripture today. And we're going to talk about a little bit what happened on the cross because it's important to understand to lay some foundations for our faith to grow even more. And I want to go into 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. And it says like this. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. It says like this. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. To who? To those that are perishing. 
That means that they think this is madness. They think that what we're doing here is crazy. They think that what we're doing here right now, talking and singing songs to Jesus, they think that it's complete foolishness. But we know who we worship. They don't know who they worship. We know who we worship. Right? It says, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. How many believe that? The message of the cross is what? The power of God. Everything that we need to know is in that event that took place that changed the whole earth. The changed time, the divided time. That's what we have before Christ and after Christ. It brought a specific point in time, and now we can refer to history through his sacrifice. Isn't that amazing? But it is foolish to those that don't know. And if we keep going, it says, 19 says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and bring to nothing the understanding of those of the prudences. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? That is Satan. It says, Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the word through wisdom, it says, did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believed. That is us. We believed. For Jews request a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, a foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because of the foolishness of God, is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Isn't that amazing? That means that it doesn't matter what men may think they are. It doesn't matter how smart they may think they may be. It doesn't matter how many PhDs they may have. They will never be able to understand God because God, again, uses, again, the foolish things to put to shame what? The wise. Isn't that amazing? That means that you don't need to know a whole lot of things. All you need to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And as you begin to search for him, as you begin to go after him, as you begin to discover what he's done on the cross for you, you begin to have revelation that comes from him. It doesn't come from a textbook. It doesn't come, you know what, from anything, but it comes from him. And you read the word and the Holy Spirit begins to what? Reveal the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. He begins to reveal how special you are. He begins to reveal how much, you know what, he loves you. He begins to reveal to you how and what he wants to do with your life and give you a purpose and a vision and to give you so many things. But it comes in pursuing him. And knowing that, yes, that he is the way, the life, and the truth. And that's exactly what he did when he died on that cross. You know what? He died for our sins, and he paid a price in full, not only for our salvation, but through his wounds, what? We have been healed. Past tense, right? We have been made, or we have been healed. And if we understand these things, that means that, wait a minute, that means it's already been given to us. Healing is something that God has given to us. Healing is the children's, the God's children's bread. You know, God has given to us the opportunity to come to him and to receive the blessings. And among those blessings, what? Life in abundance. How many want that life in abundance? It's not just simply being alive. I mean, you could be alive here today and your life could be miserable. You could be going through so many things as maybe divorces. Maybe, you know what, you're in bondage to alcohol. Maybe to drugs. Maybe to other things. Maybe pornography. You could be in bondage to all kinds of things. And you could be having a miserable life even if you live in a big white house with five cars parked in front and ten rooms. Is that life? That is not life. Life is found in Jesus Christ. And that's what he came to give us. And that's why he died on the cross. He died for what? So that everything that was lost, the relationship that we had with the Father at the beginning with Adam and Eve, when they sinned, that relationship was broken. The access that they had directly to God was broken. And now because of that, Jesus had to come. The Son of God had to come and do what? To reveal the heart of the Father. To reveal that Jesus, in this case, was the Son of God. And that he come on behalf of his Father to do what? To rescue to get that which was lost, that relationship. Each and every one of us were lost. His children, all of us, we were lost in our sins and transgressions, and therefore we were doomed. We were going right to hell. But because of the sacrifice, now we have what? We have an opportunity. 
to believe in him, to follow him, to obey him, to love him. And as we do that, we discover the life that he came to give us in abundance. And that's why it's important to reflect on the sacrifice because when he died on that cross, he was thinking of you. When he died on that cross, he was thinking of what? I want you and each and every one of us to be with him for eternity. He was thinking of all the transgressions and all the things and all the things that you know, had ever been done and he took them all upon himself. He took all of our sin. He took all of our sickness. He took all of our sorrows. He took all of our pain all of our curses. And he died on that cross for us. And that's why Good Friday is, is you know, I guess, you know, made mention of and we emphasize what he's done on that cross because that is what changed absolutely everything. It grants us what? Access to God the Father. Isn't that wonderful? That is beautiful. Let's keep going a little more. Number 26, it says, For you see your calling, brethren, that you, says that, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many might, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base, uh, says the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That is, so that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Isn't that amazing? And that is the beautiful thing because we know that there is power in the message of the cross. We know that there's power that was released the moment Jesus Christ died on that cross. And that's what we see when we read the Bible as we see that when he died, the whole earth shook. We know that the heavens became dark for three hours, the whole world. And we know that many people came even out of their tombs. People that were already believed in Jesus, that had died already, they came out of the tombs. Can you imagine that? If someone all of a sudden, maybe your uncle, your grandma, shows up in your house that was deceased maybe a year ago, they show up in your house. And that's what the power of Jesus, the power of the resurrection did. That's what transformed the whole world. That's what shook up the whole world. That is what broke the chains. That is what broke every work of Satan that he was doing. He dismantled. He completely, you know what, put to shame all the devils and his principalities and all the dark forces in this world, and he dismantled them. In other words, he took away their power. He took away all the schemes, all the lies. He exposed them all so that we, those that believe, could begin to see that this whole world is just a deception, that this whole world is just a lie, that this whole world, the system I'm talking about, belongs to Satan, but God is the owner. He is the one that reigns with justice, with love. He reigns because he reigns. He loves us. He sent his son, Jesus, and now we have access to all the things that he promised us. He is good, isn't he? He is wonderful. He is the one, again, that came to save us. And I want you to think about this for a moment because many people come to God and say, God, why don't you heal me? God, why don't you, you know, do this for me? And sometimes the devil can get in there and because we're not able or we have not received the healing or the breakthrough or the transformation, the devil puts the thought says, he, God doesn't love you. He doesn't remember you. And we begin to doubt in our faith. We begin to realize or to think somehow that maybe the devil is right. And you know what? Maybe I'm not important enough or special enough. Or you know what? God doesn't love me enough that I'm not. Maybe I'm this second class, you know, child for him. But that is nonsense. God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on that cross. I want to read this. Romans 8, 32. And I want you to understand the total defeat of Satan on the cross because when you understand this, you will know that Satan has been dismantled completely of anything that he had and was using against us to accuse us. He 
who did not spare his own son, talking about again God the Father, but delivered him, Jesus, up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, why would you think, or why would I think that God for some reason would hold back healing from me? Why would I think that God will hold up salvation from me? Why would I think that God will hold up blessings, peace, joy, and all the things that he has for me? Why would I want to think that maybe God doesn't want me to have children? My, why would I want to think that maybe God doesn't want to prosper me? Why would I think that God doesn't want to set me free from these demons? That is nonsense because he, he gave his only begotten son. He, he gave the, the thing that he loved the most, his son Jesus, to die for each and every one of us, why would he hold up something of much less value, if you want to think about it that way? Or something that is easy for him to do. All he has to do is say the word. Say the word, Lord. Say the word and my servant will be healed. Say the word. Say the word. My eyes will be opened. Say the word. Say the word and I will be set free. All he has to do is say the word because he is the living word of God. He is the one that was there from the very beginning. Again, remember, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And his word is power. His word is true. He's not a man to lie to us. He's not a son of man to even repent and regret the things that maybe he might have done and said, no, he is God, he is perfect, he is mighty, he's so big and wonderful, right? We are just seeing that a few minutes ago. But that is the power of Jesus. That is where our faith must be, knowing that he did it all on that cross. And it was that precious blood that was shed, that was the price that was paid for us, for our redemption, for our healings, for our salvation, for our families, our children, for us to live a life outside of this system that is a mess. To live a life where we can be in the middle of a storm, but yet we may still have peace, knowing that God is with us. How many believe that God is with you tonight? Yes? He's with you. And if God is with you, it can be against you. He you knows the scripture, right? And it doesn't matter what weapon may be forced against you, it will not prosper. Not because I say so, because He says so. And if you believe in that, if you believe in the power of Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in his power and what he did on that cross, let me tell you, you will begin to see the breakthroughs. Many times there's so much unbelief in our hearts that it's hard for us to believe because our reason gets in the way and we think it's impossible for me to get healed from cancer. It's impossible for me to get a breakthrough in my finances. It's impossible for God to come through. I that said, that's the end of the road for me. And somehow we give up and then belief comes in and we to do, begin to do what logically we begin to to find solutions to our problems. And that's what leads us to all these things. We're led to do what? Witchcraft, as I was telling you. We go to psychics. We go to the devil. We go to darkness to get what? What we want because God is not going to give it to us when we want it. But God wants to give it to you. He already gave it to you. He just wants you to believe. Just believe because there's nothing impossible. Nothing impossible for God. He can move the mountains. He can move every situation and make a way where there is no way. You know, many times we come to God, but we only pray for the things that we believe God can actually do in our lives. And we do not pray for those things that we should be praying, the things that seem impossible. I'll give you an example. Maybe time, you know what? Oh God, please take away this headache. And we think of it as something being small rather than thinking, God, why don't you grow this limb that was amputated from this person? How many would actually think of that and pray of something much bigger that God can have no limit to what he can do? But God can do it and God wants to do it in his life. Let's keep going. Let's go to Galatians 3. And we're going to read this because it's important to understand this. Galatians 3, 
1. It says, All foolish Galatians, again, this is Paul talking to the church of Galatians, it says, Who has bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth. In other words, who came to what? To trick you. Who came to put a spell on you that all of a sudden you're no longer looking to the truth. You're replacing the truth with something else. And that's what this world is trying to do. It's trying to get us to put our trust in what? In science. It's trying to get to put our trust in what? In the methods of men. It's trying to get to put our trust in institutions, in people, in leaders, in politicians, in all kinds of people, except on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's why the cross is foolishness to a lot of people. But he's saying to us, Put your trust in me. Put your trust in my word. Put your trust in my power. Put your trust in my son. In his name. And it says like this. Before, this says, whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. It says, the only, says this only, I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit of the words of the law or by hearing in of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? And indeed, it was in vain. It says, therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? In other words, how are we set free? Do you know how we set free? By faith. How are we healed? By faith. How do we receive breakthroughs? By faith. How are we saved? By faith. How do we come to God? By faith. We put our trust in Him and we believe with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls. We believe that what happened on that day on the cross Gave us access to the kingdom of heaven. And I don't know about you, but there is no pain, sorrows. There is no tears. There is no sickness. There is no death in the kingdom of heaven. In heaven, there's nothing. None of that. The devil is the one that comes to what? To oppress you. The devil is the one that wants to destroy your lives. The devil is the one that wants to rip you apart. He literally wants to kill us and he's trying to. And many people are asleep. Many people are not seeing what the devil is doing because they have put the trust where? On the things of this world. God wants us to turn our eyes back to him. He wants us to look back at the cross. He wants us to look at what happened that moment. Because in that moment, that's where the power was released. And now we have access to his love. So what happens? When we believe, you know what? Immediately, the Lord begins to what? Deliver us from what? From this present evil age. How many can recognize that this world is upside down today? Yes? How many can see all the nonsense with trans, you know, transgender movements, with all the indoctrination taking place in the schools, with all the nonsense happening all over the world, with the financial systems, the banks, and all these things, and yet people are what? They are uh, scared. They are afraid. They're freaking out. Because they do not have their trust where? On God. On His power that He's able to deliver us. But we do. And that is the beautiful thing. Galatians 1 3 says like this Grace to you and peace from God, the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave Himself to our sins that He might deliver us from this present age according to the will of our God and Father, He is the one. He is the one that sets us free. I'm just going to go through some scriptures quickly. Matthew 13 says, The enemy who sowed them is the devil. Again, the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers of these angels. Therefore, as the tears are gathered and burn in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. In other words, God is going to begin to what? He separates 
those that belong to him and those that don't belong to him. And his church has to be made ready to walk in holiness, to walk in that sanctification as he comes and washes us clean and begins to do a new thing. But we must be what? Putting our trust in him and his power, knowing that he will return and fulfill his promise of what he wants to do in our lives. How many understand that? How many know that Jesus really loves you? How many understand that there's absolutely nothing impossible for him? Absolutely nothing. How many understand that it only takes one word for him to say something and it happens? Things come into existence. How many understand that the blessings come from him? How many understand that what you have doesn't come from your own strengths? It doesn't come from your own bank account? It doesn't come from your own wisdom? It doesn't come from your own smarts? It comes because simply God, out of grace, decided to give it to you. In the same way, many circumstances that we're going through, God allows them, not because he creates them, he allows them. Because he's more interested in what? In saving you. In transforming you. In building the character of Christ in your life so that we can endure the season in which was upon us. But it requires faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Our, death, our, our, our faith is dead without works. So that's why if we believe in Christ, if we believe in the Son of God, if we believe that he actually died on that cross for our sins, then we will begin to change our lives accordingly. We will begin to want to know what he expects from us because the way that we show him that we love him is by obeying his commandments. And you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Isn't that amazing? I want to read this again. I read it before. Colossians 2, 14, 15. Colossians 2, again, 14, 15 says, Having wiped out, it says, the handwriting of requirements that was against us. In other words, the devil had written down accusations against you. Oh, this person is an adulteress. This person, you know what, is a thief. This person is a sinner. This person did this and that person did that. But he wiped it out, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it on the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. That means that he triumphed. He defeated the devil. There is no chance for him to ever get back up and try to destroy or to even challenge God at all. He knows he's been defeated. He knows he's been condemned. He's going to the lake of fire. Yeah, how many can say I'm into that? Yeah. But I don't know about you, but I don't want to go with him. I believe in the Son of God, the righteous one, the holy one, the Messiah, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is our healer, our provider. He is our strength, our refuge. He is our provider. He is the way, the life, and the truth. He is that and so much more. But where is your faith? Is your faith in the things of this world? Is your faith in your own strength, thinking that you will be able to save yourself? Is your faith 
on the system? Or is your faith truly in the power of God? How many believe it tonight? How many want to put all of their eggs in one basket? How many want to put their lives in the hands of Jesus? How many want to put their families, their finances, their future, their careers in the hands of Jesus? How many want to put their giftings, their time, their resources, their efforts, their dreams in the hands of Jesus? The Bible tells us that to have life is to know Him. Eternal life is to know Jesus. I say that again. You want life, you have to get to know Jesus. You want to experience that peace, get to know Jesus. You want answers, get to know Jesus. You want discernment and be able to tell between good and evil, get to know Jesus. You want wisdom, get to know Jesus. You want to be healed, get to know Jesus. It is his name, which is above all names. And the Bible tells us that God the Father exalted him. After Jesus died and he finished what he came to do, he was exalted. And that's what we see in that song, that he is exalted. He is exalted above all things. Of course, not above the Father, but he's exalted above all things. And that's why his name is above all names. The name of Jesus is a name above all names. That is the name that every time will confess. Every knee will bow down. Every demon will bow down. Every sickness will bow down to that name. Everything will bow down before the name of Jesus. So where is your trust? Is it in him? Or is it on this world? Where is your effort going to? Where is your time going to? What are you doing with your time, with your life? Where are you heading in your life? If you're not looking for Jesus, if you're not heading for Jesus, if you're not searching for him, then you're wasting your time. Because he is the only way to the Father. And he said, I give you my name. Use my name. Because in my name, you will do what? You will cast out demons. In my name, you will trample again serpents and scorpions. You have the authority. You have permission to use my name. Use it. And to destroy every work of the devil. Because when you get sick, let me tell you, the Bible says that we get sick for two reasons. One, because of sin. Sometimes, yes, we sin, we mess up, and a consequence, a door is open. Curses may come. But many times, it is simply because God wants to bring glory to his name. And that's when we must learn to be what? Patient. But all we got to do is say, Lord, if you can heal me, please heal me. And you know what he'll say? I want to. I want to heal you. I want to set you free. I want you to be with me. That is the power that we find in the cross. That is the power that we find. But not only that happened, but when he died, the Bible tells us that he went where? He went down to Hades. I want to read the scripture to you.
First Peter 3.18 to 20. It says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the righteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God wanted patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight and all, were saved through water. So what it's saying here, it says that Jesus set the people free that were down there in hell before he was on this world. And all those that were died from the moment, from that moment of Noah, everyone that had passed away, he did what? He preached to them. He told them who he was. And he busted hell open. And all these souls came out. And they were saved. That is the power of the resurrection. That is the power of Jesus Christ. So where is your faith tonight? Where is your faith tonight? Is your faith in the name of Jesus? Is your faith in his word? Is your faith in the power of the blood? Is your faith in the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to us by the price that he paid on that cross? Is your faith truly, truly in the Son of God? I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. We're going to pray tonight. No one is going to pray for you tonight. Just believe. 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 That there's power in that precious name. Are you ready? I'm going to ask him, uh, Liam to put some background music, please. Close your eyes. I want you to put your hand wherever the effect is. Wherever you're affected, wherever you have pain. If it's in your heart, meaning that you're, you're broken hearted, put it there. Maybe there's nothing wrong with you, but maybe it's your family. Yes, you can take a stand for your son, for your daughter, for your grandma, for your mother, for your neighbor. It doesn't matter who it is. Because this is the night. The power is in his name. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you tonight believing and knowing and having a revelation through your word and the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that there's power in the message of the cross. That there is power in what you did that day when you died for our sins. That there is power to break the chains. To remove the sickness from our bodies. That there is power by believing in you. Putting our faith in you, Lord God. So in the name of Jesus, Father, we renounce to every influence of this world in our lives. We renounce to the work of the devil in our lives. We renounce to all spirits of sickness and pain and death that have come to try to take away our health. In the name of Jesus, there's an impossible for God, and I claim that healing, because by his wounds I have been made healed. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus upon my life. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my son, my daughter, my, my neighbor. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my finances. Because I know that every curse 
was taken away and died on that cross when Jesus died. I know that every sickness was taken and put on that cross because of what he did. And I believe that he is the way, the life, and the truth. And I thank you, Father, because in Jesus' name, I am healed. I thank you, Jesus, because in Jesus' name, in your name, I've been set free. In Jesus' name, I cast out all the darkness from my life. I cast out all the curses from my life. I cast out all the things, the lies, the schemes, the deceptions. Father, in the name of Jesus, remove the veils from my eyes that I may see the beauty of the power and the holiness of Jesus Christ in my life. The beauty that was revealed on that cross. Because, Lord, we're not ashamed of the gospel, but rather we know again that it is power unto salvation. So that we will believe and put our trust in your power. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, say that. In the name of Jesus, I am free. I am set free. By the blood of Jesus. By the power that operates in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I am free. And every demon is casted out in Jesus' name. I break free with the authority and the power that God has given me through his name to destroy and to trample on every serpent, every scorpion in Jesus' name. 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 Oh, Holy Spirit, move in this place. Move in our hearts. Touch our hearts. Touch our bodies. If anyone here has been suffering with dry skin, that it cracks, it crackles, and you get this, this sensation that it just burns, and sometimes it even bleeds. The Lord wants you to check it right now. He wants you to check that. Check it. And I want every one of you to check whatever it is that was wrong with you. If you had a lump, I want you to go to the washroom and check it. If you had pain, I want you to move around and check if it's still there. Remember, where's our faith on? On Jesus. Why are you surprised? Why are you surprised? He is the one that does this. Check, check. Whatever was wrong with you, check. Check your heart. Check your legs. Check your joints. Check your knees. Move it, move it, move it. Do you have the faith? Or are you so doubtful? I want you to take a stand, take a step of faith. And say, Lord, my faith is in you. My faith is in you. My faith is in you. I put my life in you. I put my life in you. He's moving. I can, I can sense him very strong. I want you to just focus on him. Don't focus on me. Focus on him. I 
I want everyone to close your eyes for a moment. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. If you feel God is touching you right now, if you feel that that pain is gone, if you feel that heaviness just lifted off, if you feel light and you feel like something came over you and just began to touch you right now, I want you to lift your hand wherever you are. Lift it, lift it. Come up, come up here. Come up here. If you felt something, come up here. Come on. Come up here. Remember, this is by faith, right? This is all by faith. This is all by faith. And I don't want you to tell me what you think happened. I want you to tell me what actually happened. If you felt that maybe heaviness left you, you came with a huge headache, you know what, maybe I made your headache worse by the way that I was singing. <laughs> and it's gone. Lift up your hand. I'm serious. If you need to go to the washroom and check your body, go check your body. Have faith. Remember what Jesus said? Go, he said to those lepers, he said, go and present yourselves. Before who? Before the priest. And as they went, by faith, as they were instructed, what happened? They got healed. They showed up already healed. So do you have the faith to go check in the washroom? Hmm? That's up to you, not up to me. Do you have the faith? This is why I'm trying to challenge your faith tonight. He's trying to challenge you to see if you really believe this stuff or if you just simply know it. Go check. Move. Try something you couldn't do before. Do we have the faith? Or not? I'm going to ask here. That's okay. It's okay. Come, come. Tell me what happened to you. Uh, well, you know all these things and trying to talk, but every time we talk, it just doesn't work out. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on in my personal life, and all week it's just been <laughs> oppressing me. I've been having nightmares. I've been waking up and there's particles in my car. My engine is leaking. And, and today I just felt just so much heavy. It was like my chest was like I couldn't breathe. Like there was so much oppression. And as you began to pray and, and I sat there, even driving here, I just felt in my spirit that something was going to happen. And as I sat there, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me. And, you know, I burped and, and air and, and I just felt in my head like just something lift off and it's not by seeing anything with my natural eyes it's supernatural faith and all of those things that are going on in my life has been dealt with by the holy spirit today and, and it's gone Amen. and i just i just i can feel it in my like my chest isn't squeezing it's not tight I, it's not like i can't breathe you felt the so heaviness go. i felt the heaviness go i felt the oppression go in the name of Jesus, when you Come on, this is crazy, Lord. Thank you. I have to say, I've had a pretty rough week. Um, a lot of it's an emotional heartache. Um, but sitting here tonight, it was more so hard because wind just came in. And, and I had to look over because I thought, but this one just came, and I knew it was something beyond. I was feeling a lot of pressure in my uh, in my thigh, my in this area here, and I just it was burning. I was sitting there, and it was burning as he kept talking. And it was getting worse. It was really hard to just sit still, to be honest with you. And then it just lifted, and just knowing that. My faith, it's restoring my faith and moving forward and fearing not. What God has put in my heart for me to do and give a service and have no fear to just move forward with it.
Come on, let's pray, okay? What do you say we pray? She said she felt this wind come into this place. That is the wind of the Holy Spirit. He's here. The question is, do you believe? Do you believe? What will it take for you to believe? Father, in the name of Jesus, let your Holy Spirit come stronger upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. Let your presence come, oh God, and begin to surround, oh God, and come deep and remove all the sorrows, remove all the pain, all the, all the, the letdowns, oh God, the disappointments. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your love come, oh God, that love that removes and casts out all fears. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let that love come in. Holy Spirit, pour it out into her right now. More love, more love, more love, more love, as much as she can take, as much as she can take. As much as you can take, let those rivers of living water flow, flow, flow. You are free. You are free. You are free because Jesus sets you free. Free from the sorrows. Free from the regrets. Free from the condemnation. Free from the sickness. Free from the pain. In the name of Jesus, receive, receive his love. Receive his love. Receive, receive, receive that healing in your soul. Receive that healing in your mind. Receive the healing right now in the name of Jesus in the most inner being. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, fill it up with your Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, baptize her, God, with your Holy Spirit. <laughs> baptize her with your Holy Spirit. Let her experience your power, God. Let her experience, God, the transformation. Let her experience more and 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 more. Come on, extend your hands, extend your hands. God is here. I want you to put one hand over your, whatever it hurts, or the, the, your head, and say, Lord, I receive. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive more of you. I receive your healing. I receive your comfort. I receive your strength tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Jesus heals you. Jesus heals you. Jesus heals you. Inside and outside. Jesus heals you. More, Jesus, more. Take it all out, look at it. All the sorrow, spirit of sorrow, you come out now. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of sorrow, you come out. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Completely. Out, out. No more sorrow, no more sorrow, no more sorrow. Out, out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, the Holy Spirit come stronger and stronger. In Jesus, in Jesus, come on, let's praise the Lord. 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 God is doing a new thing in you. Just believe. Just believe. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's praise the Lord. What happened with you, Natalie? Well, I've been feeling some pain sitting there, a burning sensation on my, my skin, my hands especially. And, and so as soon as you said, anybody here have dry skin, and I just turned to you right away, and anything going on with the skin, and all of a sudden the burning started to fade away. And uh, just a lot of things have been happening every weekend that I come here. Even, um, well, I have fourth stage ovarian cancer, and I have um, the water in my right lung is their pleural infusion, which is cancerous. But anyway, I haven't been able to really sneeze or even yawn and to the fullest like anybody else can. Usually when I sneeze, I, I, it stops because the pain is so bad that my actual sneeze stops. Now I've been sneezing and I've been yawning and there's still some pain there, but it's not as bad as when it first began. And you know what happened to me two weeks ago. And it was, I think it was our first or our second healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that Sunday, the day before I started a new job. So good things happened too. While I've been coming here, I got a job. I got accepted for stem cell therapy in Mexico. Um, so anyway, that night, I threw up over and over and over till about three o'clock in the morning. And I was starting a brand new job the next day. I haven't worked in 
two, three years now, and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to do this job. I can't do it. I don't know where I got my strength. I don't even know where I got my energy from, but I know it's God. And I think that night, when I kept throwing up, I don't know why I was throwing up. There was no food to throw up. I had digested my food. I had eaten at about 6.30 at night. It was just water. And every time I kept saying, because I was afraid, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and then while I'm lying there in bed, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and I had to keep running to the bathroom to throw up, it was like something inside of me was just coming out. So I feel like things have changed in my life, and they're going to keep changing, and I'm going to heal. Amen. And it's going to be a miracle. And, uh, Amen, amen. Stay there. Come on. Let's pray for her. Remember, God brings breakthroughs. When she was, again, vomiting, she was being set free and delivered from all the spirits of sickness and whatever's happened in her life before. And the breakthrough came in when she was delivered. The breakthrough comes. And we believe in that God can heal everything. doesn't matter how big or how vicious that cancer may be. He can do it. You believe it. Do you believe it? Yeah. Come on, do you really believe it? Yes, amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we command that cancer to go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of death, every spirit that has come to steal, to take away, to kill, to destroy Lord God, her life, in Jesus' name, we destroy it right now. We bind it, we cast them out. And everyone else that may be sick in this place, in the name of Jesus, we believe in your name. We believe in the power of the cross, the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lungs be healed. Fluid come out in Jesus' name. Ovaries be healed in Jesus' name. Father, she knows how she feels, and I pray for that touch from your hand, Lord Jesus, to restore again. Every single, every single thing deep within her soul, her heart, her body. In Jesus' name, we just pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Do you believe God is here? Can you feel him? I'm telling you, if you have something, go check in the washroom. I'm telling you, obey the Lord, not me. Take a step of faith. What, what, what are you going to lose? Huh? What are you going to lose? One minute of your life? What are you going to lose? You got nothing to lose, but you got everything to gain. If you believe. Amen. Anyone here has never accepted Jesus in their life? Has never said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I repent of my sins. Give me a new life. I want to serve you, and I want to follow you. Anyone here has never done that and would like to do it tonight? Yes? No? Don't be afraid. That's the best decision you'll ever make. Yes? No? Everyone believes in Jesus. That's a good thing. But we should also see people that don't believe, wanting to believe, wanting to don't Jesus to come to the churches. And we're going to see that. We're seeing that. That people are going to run to the churches because they're going to see power in the churches. They're going to see Jesus in the churches. They're going to see miracles in the churches. They're going to see breakthroughs in the churches. They're going to see salvation in the churches. And supernatural provision for God's people. Do you believe that tonight? Just make this prayer with me. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want it. I need it. I desire it. In Jesus' name, transform me and set me free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you, this is our, what, our fifth, I believe it's our fifth uh, night now. That we continue, we still got two more to go. And I want to encourage you to come and don't miss them. Because God is doing great things. He's working different areas in your life. Today, he's working the unbelief and to getting you to trust 
and to put your trust in the power of God. That's why I'm not going to pray for anybody tonight. No one is going to pray for you tonight. Only the Holy Spirit is going to work in you tonight. So where is your faith? Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We give you glory and we give you praise and we give you all the glory, Lord. Because, Lord, you're doing tremendous things in all of us. You're transforming us, changing us, healing us. And, Lord, I know there's more stories, Lord God, but, Lord, we don't have enough time to hear them all. But we will, Lord God. We will see them, we will hear them, and we will, Lord God, give you the glory and the praise. Because there is nothing, nothing impossible for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.